This is Sunday Focus, a weekly public affairs program that looks at the topics affecting our society and the people who are making a change in the community each and every day. The people who have vision for the next generation. Sunday Focus presents new challenges for us, keeping you informed with topics of local and regional interest. Now the host of Sunday Focus, Christine Manica. Good morning. Coming up on this edition of Sunday Focus, I'm being joined by a representative from Hope Haven and the executive director of the Teddy Bear Den, Sandy Lound. It's been a busy year for the Teddy Bear Den, and it only keeps on getting busier. The upcoming Celebrity Night Out is Saturday, January 21st, and Sandy Lound is going to tell us all about it, along with other events happening within the Teddy Bear Den this year. That's all coming up on this edition of Sunday Focus. Thousands of people contact InventHelp monthly about their invention or new product. Do you think companies would be interested in your idea? Do you want to try to get a patent? Call InventHelp now. Best of all, the call and information are free. InventHelp keeps your idea confidential, explaining every step of the invention process. We create professional materials and submit them to companies who are looking for new ideas in your category. We have more than 9,000 companies who have agreed to review new ideas in confidence. If a company shows interest in manufacturing, Manufacturing your invention, we can negotiate on your behalf. We have helped over 10,000 clients receive patents. We offer 3D modeling and animation, prototyping services, and we use state-of-the-art technology to present client ideas to additional companies. Join people just like you who made the call to invent help. You have nothing to lose. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-352-1609. That's 1-800-352-1609. Again, 1-800-352-1609. Welcome back to another edition of Sunday Focus. There are so many great organizations here around the Sioux Empire, one of them being the Teddy Bear Den. They have a lot of different events going on throughout the year, including the upcoming Celebrity Night Out. Joining us right now in studio from the Teddy Bear Den is the Executive Director, Sandy Lown. Hey, Sandy, good morning. Good to see you. You know, isn't it so nice to see people? Oh my gosh, it is so great. I know, because all that time we went with Mm -hmm. just like phone interviews or Zoom, and now we're all back together. There's a lot of things that we have to catch up on, but first, for anyone who isn't familiar with the Teddy Bear Den, why don't you tell us about it? So our program is an incentive and education-based program for the limited income pregnant women in Sioux Falls. So for the last 26 and a half years, we have been serving women and children All of our moms earn what we call healthy lifestyle points by doing the things that all of us do as a routine. Go to the doctor, not smoke, drink or use drugs, immunize your children, well baby checkups. And as they earn all of those points, they come down to our store and shop with points for brand new baby items instead of using cash. It's a great incentive to encourage those moms and even get the kids excited about something saying, hey, maybe there's a toy in there or maybe some new baby outfit. Absolutely. And everything we carry is new. So we have everything from toys and baby clothes and high chairs and cribs and strollers, diapers. That's a big one for us. Mm -hmm. And so we carry all of those basic necessities that everybody else takes for granted when they can go to Target or Walmart to purchase. And our moms can't afford to go purchase those items themselves. How many people in the Sioux Empire, rough number here, would you say benefit from the Teddy Bear Den? Right now, our enrollment is at about 1,400. So we have about 1,400 women enrolled in our program. But over the last 26 years, we have served over 35,000 people in our community. Wow. That must make you feel good. It does. I should say. It does. It's crazy when you run into moms in like different locations and they say, oh, I used to be enrolled in your program. We did interviews with past participants in our program for our upcoming event. And so they're going to be the video and they just talked about what our program did. And it is very moving to listen to other people talk about what the pro- what the teddy bear done has done. Is there a mom or maybe someone in your mind that is a great heartfelt story of, that comes from the teddy bear den? Oh my gosh. We have so many of those stories. I mean, we have people who say to us, oh, I mean, this isn't just a story. This is a routine basis. We have parents who say to us, like, we could not afford to put diapers on our children. Thank you for helping us supply diapers. I mean, I can think of the mom and her 13-year-old son and the new baby. And she says, and, and well, her baby isn't new right now. Her baby is actually almost a year old. And she said that that's all we've done for her is supply diapers for her baby and wipes. 
which is very rewarding. Mm-hmm. She could not afford to do that herself. No, and it's thanks to organizations like the Teddy Bear Den to make that all possible. And there are different events, fundraisers that you guys host to keep the organization going. Besides the Celebrity Night Out, can you talk about other events that you guys do? So we had our first Birdies for Babies over the summer last year, (laughs) which is a golf event. And it was our first golf tournament. And it was great. Despite the rain, the pouring rain, it was fantastic. And the golfers are in such good moods. Even if it's raining, they're all happy and they're all, I didn't understand it. I'm inside fretting and they are all happy to be there. So that was great. And then we were taken on last year by the uh, False Facial Hair Foundation. Yes. And they did an event for us. They pick a different charity every year. And so last year they chose the Teddy Bear Den and they used their event in September and the donation benefited the Teddy Bear Den. So, I mean, and other businesses also do events and they donate to the Teddy Bear Den. It's just really fantastic. Sandy Lau with the Teddy Bear Den is with us in the studio right now. Now, believe it or not, Sandy, the January 20th, 2020 Celebrity Night Out was right before the pandemic hit. And that was probably one of the last big events before everything kind of shut down. So let's go back to when COVID-19 became a reality for us. What were the plans in place for the Teddy Bear Den? And did you find ways to stay open for the people that benefit from you guys? You know, I would love to tell you we had some great plan if this ever happened, (laughs) but we had no plan. We really completely punted through this. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we did our job. We closed for two weeks trying to figure some things Mm -hmm. out and how things were going to work for us. And we did everything. So for three months, we did free handouts of basic necessities. So anyone who came to us, regardless if they were enrolled in our program or not, we were doing diapers and wipes and bath products and you know, just those basic necessities that families need. And not only did we serve women enrolled in our program, but we served about 180 that were not even enrolled in our program. Because we know in Sioux Falls, many places were closed down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we tried to serve all of those people as equally as if they were enrolled in our program without question. So we were running things out. The board wanted to close for a while. I said, no, we have healthcare providers on our board. So we follow, I followed their rules to a T, which was you mask up and you wear gloves Mm -hmm. because you know, at the beginning we didn't know Mm -hmm. like where this was going or how this was transferred. All people had to do was call. They call We would line up items along like a path in the den with the name of the person and the items that they needed. And they would then call when they got there. And I was the only person there. So we didn't have our volunteers come in, no one else. And I would run it out, set it on the curb and then run in and they would jump out of their car and put it in their car. So that's how we did it at the beginning. Then it got too cold for that. So then we (laughs) cut our screen out of our front door at the den and we worked through the door. Oh my gosh. I mean, so, I mean, we just did all of these things. Then we did, uh, then it got colder and then they came in. And so they came in, but only in the entryway. Mm -hmm. So we did all of these things in order to serve the teddy or serve our community. There was no way out of it. These are people who are in basic in need of basic items, mm-hmm. and we had to help each and every one of them. How did the people react to those sort of adjustments? You know, it was really crazy because people were so good and so kind about how we were going to continue to serve them. And they understood because like everybody else, you know, we were all masking up and worried when we went to the grocery store, you know, mm-hmm. so... It just worked really well. And then remember the grocery store started doing like you could just pull up and your order would be ready. So all of these things that were happening in our community, we were trying to take bits and pieces from other businesses and other organizations and how they were serving people. And our moms were just happy that we were there and happy that we were open. Now, did you ever think that you'd be leading an organization through a pandemic? And and we talk about it a lot because we had to pivot to a new normal. And now we're somehow trying to figure out how to pivot back to what it was before. I know. I never thought that. I mean, I don't know how many of us actually did think that because mm-hmm. all of you were working for home, from home for yeah. a while. So, I mean, it's just something completely new. And I think Sioux Falls did a remarkable job mm-hmm. of handling it. And I think 
you know, our leaders did a great job of handling it. And so I think Sioux Falls turned around and has done a magnificent job. No, and it's still doing a man right. magnificent job, too. One of the adjustments that you made during the pandemic was having the virtual celebrity night out in 2021. That was probably not an easy decision to come to for that. Oh, my gosh. You know, we have health care providers on our board, and we were all about we were going to hold this event. And then finally, I mean, it was just a few months or two months before the event, and they said, there is no way you are going to get guests yeah. to come to this event. And so then we threw everything online and I was stunned. Here we are at JJ's holding an event that's virtual and there's like five people in this room and we're all spread out around the room because nobody wants to be close together there either. Mm -hmm. So we're all spread out in this room and it actually went really well. And we did charcuterie boards from there so that they could like come and pick up food or pick up drinks and go home and be a part of our event Mm. and still eat and drink and be a part of it online. And it I was stunned at how well it went. Did some people wear pajamas? I'm hoping they did, (laughs) because trust me, on the other end, here's all of us at like our event. And I'm in like jeans and a sweater. You know, it was awesome. All of people are in jeans and sweatshirts. Nobody, you know, those of us that were there at JJ's pulling it off. Nobody cared how they were dressed. I think I had a baseball cap on. I mean, I was like, hey, I don't have to be on. This is great. This is the way it should always be. (laughs) One of the many lessons that you can take away from the pandemic. (laughs) And and if anything, what are other lessons that you can take away? Maybe working from home, especially since we had those two major snowstorms that just shut everything down again. I know. And you know what? Working from home isn't so bad. No. I mean, I think a lot of people, it seems like a lot of businesses have changed their ways and people are working from home. And so I think it goes really well. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, don't mind it. Who doesn't like turning around and being able to throw in a load of laundry in the middle of a day? Or like do a load of dishes <laughs> exactly. in your pajamas. I know. <laughs> You're sitting there. It doesn't matter what you have on on the bottom. You have a sweater on top. You're like in sweats and a sweater yeah. so you can hit the Zoom meeting. I mean, people are doing it all the time now. All the time. Sandy Lown with the Teddy Bear Den is with us in the studio. Now, it's so exciting to have events like Celebrity Night out back in action and in person so let's talk about it for this year what can people expect during this exciting evening you know we are just so busy we have we have 16 live auction packages we have about probably 40 uh silent auction packages they are online right now that you can look at them and start bidding if you go to teddybearden.org and hit auction at the top and you can go through the packages bid away see what we have It's just an exciting event with so many different packages, whether you're into health and fitness or sports or entertainment or home. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just have things for for everything. Any new features this year? You know what? We are doing a couple of new things at the event. Yes. Tell me more. So we're doing heads or tails. Which is people buy a necklace for $10. And if you have on the necklace, everybody's standing up. And our auctioneer flips a coin. And you, before he flips the coin, you have your hands on your head or on your tail. (laughs) And then he flips the coin. And if it's heads, you stay standing. And all the tails sit down. And it continues to go through this. And we're going to continue to play it. And we have a great gift from the Diamond Room. And so that's why we're doing Heads or Tails Mm -hmm. is because the Diamond Room has been so kind to donate to us. So we're doing a couple of different events like that. Uh, We're doing Fund a Mission, which is another thing that we're going to do in the middle of the auction. So we have all of these different things that we're bringing in this year to kick off just something completely new. It's our 20th year. We want to kick off some new events and have some fun while we're there. Absolutely. What, What do you think the best part about this evening is? Oh, my gosh. Toughest question you'll have. I know. That is kind of a tough question. (laughs) Because for me, I think everybody views it different on what is the funnest part of the evening. But for me, the funnest part is seeing that we are going to be able to continue serving the people in our community. So that, to me, is the best part. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I am a person 
as an executive director, of course, you're a person who's always worried about, concerned about how much money do we raise and how mm-hmm. much this. And and I always worry about that. But I also think in the end that it's all about, OK, we're going to be able to stay open and we're going to be able to do something new and we're going to be able to serve these people in a different way. And how many people are we going to be able to serve? Mm-hmm. So I think that those are the things that are going through my head about how the fun of the evening Um I think, you know, obviously everybody else has a different idea. Am I going to get my package? Did I bid high enough? (laughs) I'm ready for this. You know, I always think of it as an end product of who we're going to serve. Now, what's a goal for the event, would you say, this year? (gasps) Oh, my gosh. Do you mean money-wise? I never tell anybody my goal. I mean, you... Drum roll? Do I have to tell people my... Whatever you want to say. I know. Okay, so my goal this year is $90,000. Okay. I think that Sioux Falls can do it. Oh, I don't know. That's a lot. Well, that is, um, so, you know, we operate on a budget mm-hmm. of a little over $200,000 a year. Right. So to raise almost half of your budget in one night is a pretty big deal. So that's my goal. I haven't told anybody that goal yet. It's always <laughs> in my head. I haven't even told my board. The the inside scoop. I know. Right here on Sunday I always Focus. just set it in my head, in my mind, of how much we're going to (laughs) raise. Now, the Celebrity Night Out, it's back at the Minnehaha Country Club, correct? It is. Yeah. Yeah. We only have two tables left. Ooh. Yes. So, if you are interested in tickets, get a hold of us. Um, We only have two tables left to sell. So, we have 16 tickets left. Ooh. I know. Get them while they're hot. That's what I'd say. I know. It's crazy. (laughs) Invitations just went out and we've sold tables like crazy. So anything else happening with you guys in 2023? You know, a great thing for us is that we've hired a community health worker and Mm -hmm. that has been a huge turnaround for the Teddy Bear Den in order to help us serve our moms in an even, um, I don't want to say better way, but more of a complete what they need way if Mm -hmm. that makes sense if moms have special needs or are in need of certain things we have our community health workers she can send them off to furniture mission or union gospel for different things or hey head out to the fairgrounds for food or things like that and it's things that we post and things we keep our moms familiar with but it's also really nice to have that individual who is working with each family that she can work with yeah any so, volunteer opportunities that are coming up for you guys? Oh, my too. gosh. We always have volunteer opportunities. <laughs> I mean, you can volunteer at the teddy bear den. You know, like that's once a month if you want to. Mm-hmm. Two hours once a month. And so you can volunteer at the teddy bear den. We even still have some openings for help at our event that's coming up. And so if people want to come in and work a couple hours and, you know, help people get seated or pull auction packages, things like that, mm-hmm. we can use help with that, too. I mean, it's all a mere matter of just getting a hold of us. What about items that you guys are looking for? Anything that you need to stock up in your teddy bear den? You know, we are always looking for items. So, I mean, whether it's anything from bottles and diapers and wipes or cribs and mattresses. I mean, all of our things need to be new. And so for some families, I mean, I would like to give like a whole array of things. But (laughs) I mean, we have a list on our uh, website also, teddybearden.org, that people can jump on and look at too. Once again, it's Sandy Lown with the Teddy Bear Den talking about the organization and the upcoming Celebrity Night Out. Again, it's on Saturday, January 21st. Minnehaha Country Club is the place where the party's happening That's for that. Right. Now, Sandy, if anybody has more has any questions about the Teddy Bear Den or want to go volunteer, what's a phone number to call and that website one more time? The phone number to call is 605-335-2730, or they can jump on our website, which is teddybearden.org. Sandy, thanks so much for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you. All right, we'll be back. They grow more distant from their friends and stop doing their schoolwork. They become rebellious and argue with their brothers, sisters, and parents. They're angry and they lash out, sneak out, and just zone out. It's hard being a teen today. If your 12 to 17 year old boy or girl is struggling and you don't know what to do next, call Hope Harbor. Learn more at hopeharbormn.org. I really didn't know what to do. I was scared. That's HopeHarborMN.org. You know what really gets a party started? Indoor baseball. Yeah, just find a broom or a pool cue, and you can use, like, anything as a ball. Cans, bottles, shoes. Hey, bro, toss me that avocado. Most party fouls are pretty dumb, but if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. 
Learn more at ultimatepartyfoul.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. I am joined in the studio from Hope Haven Marketing Manager, Brooke Koima. I said that right, right? Yep, that's yes. correct. There we go. She is going to talk to us about the organization and lots of exciting events coming up. First of all, Brooke, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always nice to have someone back in the studio face to face. I've mentioned this before. And let's just put it this way. Last year and this year was just different in general. It has been different. But before we get to that, let's talk about Hope Haven. And what is your organization all about? Hope Haven is a nonprofit organization that provides services and support for people with disabilities. Um, our services are comprehensive. We have a really big umbrella, so we do a lot of different things that cover a lot of aspects of a person's life that's vocational, so connecting people with job opportunities, housing, so that's direct care in in homes. Um, We have an international ministries program, um, so we do a lot of different things. Um, And individual choice is really key in all of our services, Mm -hmm. empowering people to have a productive life of their choosing in their own communities. What about people that benefit from this program? So when people come in to Hope Haven, what is their number one priority that they're looking for from you guys? Yeah, so it really varies based on individual need. Um, Our largest service program at the moment is community living. We have over 60 community living residences in Northwest Iowa and Southwest Minnesota. But like I said, it really varies based on that person's needs. And our international ministries program has their distribution center in Sioux Falls. And that program has delivered over 130,000 wheelchairs in 109 countries. So, and they estimate that there are millions of people around the world who still need a wheelchair and can't access one. So that program has a really great need and a lot of people tap into that and and work with us on that program. So I, I should have mentioned in the beginning that this is part of the Sioux Empire. So you have a yes. location in Iowa. Yes. And then is there also an office located in Sioux Falls? Yeah. So our headquarters are in Rock Valley, Iowa, but our international ministries is headquartered in Sioux Falls. And you were talking about the wheelchair ministry yep. just now. How many wheelchairs, just so I can figure that out, how many wheelchairs would you say you distribute a year? It really depends. Anywhere between 2,000 to 5,000 wheelchairs, probably. Can you talk about some experiences that people have had with Hope Haven? So our organization was founded in 1964, so there's a lot of history there. Yeah. Um, And a lot of people, especially in the Sioux Empire, have been on a trip with us or they have volunteered at one of our wheelchair workshops. And that basically uh, working in a wheelchair workshop entails refurbishing wheelchairs that are donated. So if someone has a wheelchair that they no longer use, they'll donate it to our organization and we, our volunteers will refurbish it to like new and then it'll be donated to someone in need. So locally people help us refurbish those wheelchairs. And then there's also opportunities for people to go on trips with us to places like Vietnam and Guatemala and Romania and be a part of that process where they're personally giving a wheelchair to somebody in need. So those are some really great experiences. There's so many stories, but when you're there in that country and you're, you're seeing the person get that life changing gift of a wheelchair, it's, it's really incredible. It's probably really rewarding for you on your end, just to see it all unfold. Definitely. It's the whole, you see the whole process right there. Things that have changed with COVID-19, too. And there really isn't an area that hasn't been affected in some way. Nonprofits and organizations like Hope Haven especially have been hurting during this difficult time. Yeah, re- things really were put on pause with that. We had one of our last trips in March, and then things really came to a halt on that. Behind the scenes, we were still collecting wheelchairs, and our volunteers were safely working when they could on on refurbishing them. But yeah, we didn't have a lot of trips last year, so we're excited when things start opening back up to, to get back out there and and get those wheelchairs distributed to people in those countries. So when COVID first became a reality, what were your thoughts personally and as an organization? Yeah, wow. Difficult time for everyone, especially in our nonprofit and what we do. Locally, we provide direct care. So that's super challenging because the the work that we do that way doesn't stop and people can't work from home. And then our wheelchair ministry just 
all of those trips being paused and it yeah it's really difficult but our I would say our leadership was really innovative and coming up with solutions and all of our employees it was such a team effort of following all those procedures and being a really united front in order to come through it all but yeah what a what a difficult strange time don't remember my exact reaction but just yeah. really not sure how to take that all in because so new for everyone. I know. And we're all still trying to process this year in general, too. And you already just said this. How did your team act to the pandemic and what was the plan going forward? Our team really acted and collaborated to come up with those safety procedures in terms of all of our different service programs, whether that be local or international, like pausing some of those trips. Mm -hmm. Um, And then on our fundraising aspect of things with our events, you know, figuring out, oh, do we cancel this? Do we reschedule it? So that was an interesting thing to navigate all of those challenges. When you did eventually, because for the most part, yeah, because of COVID, all those events that were planned were canceled or postponed. So what were just some of the events that were canceled for Hope Haven? Well, we have a rock and roll for Hope event that's at the Country Club in Sioux Falls every March. That was canceled. And then we had a couple other concert events that take place in the spring that were canceled. Thankfully, we were able to hold some of our summer events that are out, were outside. Mm-hmm. The ones that we postponed, we did have in the summer and the fall, but they just looked different, right? Less people there, mm-hmm. mass safety procedures like that. So we were able to pivot with some of those events. But yeah, it was just a challenging thing to restructure those events. But so a few of them were canceled. A few of them were restructured and postponed. If you are just listening, Brooke from Hope Haven, she is joining me in the studio right now. Now, there is an event coming up for you guys. But before we get into that, how crucial are these events and fundraisers for an organization like Hope Haven? Fundraising events are huge for us. We have you know, about a dozen events throughout the year. So events are a huge part of our fundraising efforts. So, and not only is it a great way for us to raise funds, but it's just a great way to get the community involved and aware of what we do. Um, It connects people with volunteering opportunities. So there's just a number of ways that, that, events are really critical to our fundraising efforts. Absolutely. And just like events like the auction and other programs you put on at Hope Haven, you need help. So what are volunteer opportunities that are offered at Hope Haven? Yeah, there's a number of different ways that people can volunteer and get involved with Hope Haven. Um, we have a list of all of those on our website, hopehaven.org slash volunteer. And it, you know, it depends on the location that you're at. But if, in Sioux Falls specifically, we have opportunities to help out at, at our, um, our Sioux Falls headquarters, our international ministries. So you can get involved by helping refurbish those wheelchairs. You can also help us load up for shipments, um, organize. There's administrative tasks. So there's a lot of information on our website about about what how you can help out that way and sign up. So yeah, and in fundraising events, there's there's a lot of different ways. For more information, you've said the website already a couple of times, more information about Hope Haven and also the upcoming auction. Remind everyone the website, the date and the time. Yeah, check out hopehaven.org for more information on all of our events. Brooke Koima with Hope Haven, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Our daughter was back. We had sanity back in our family life. The tools they gave us as a family, we will always be able to use. I'm John from Sioux Falls. We had to do something because our home was in havoc. We brought our daughter to Hope Harbor in Marshall, Minnesota when she was 15. The change was night and day. Hope Harbor helps struggling girls and boys 12 through 17. When you think there's nothing more you can do, there is hope. Hope Harbor. Go to hopeharbormn.org. Hi, I'm Trooper Henry with the South Dakota Highway Patrol. I would like to encourage you to make sure you're utilizing a proper following distance. A good distance is about one car length per 10 miles per hour. So at 65 miles per hour, you should have 6.5 car length between your car and the one in front of you. This is a major cause of the crashes in the Sioux Falls area. Please help us combat following too close. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the South Dakota Highway Patrol and Results Town Square Media. I'm Christine Manica, and you've been listening to Sunday Focus. I'd like to thank Brooke Coima from Hope Haven and Sandy Lown from the Teddy Bear Dead for joining us this morning. Join us again next week for another edition of Sunday Focus. Sunday Focus is a public affairs program of Results Radio Town Square Media, Sioux Falls.